let's clear this up. I've got five things I want to tell you about hell. Real quick, we're going to go through these really quick. Five things to clear up to give us a firm understanding of hell. Firstly, the first thing we've got to understand about hell is this, is that Jesus is the judge. Jesus is the judge, and he's far more qualified than Judy. Far more qualified. He knows what he's doing. He's not going to make random decisions. If you respect Jesus, if you... If you think that Jesus understands human weakness because he took on our flesh and he sympathizes with our temptations and that he suffered like us and you believe in the grace of Jesus and you believe that Jesus loves people and you're confident in the wisdom of Jesus, that he's got this mission to redeem people, that he's, he's come to save people. If you believe all that, then understand this, that Jesus is the judge of the living and the dead and his judgments will be perfect. They'll be incredible. They'll be so amazing. They'll be so fair and so wise and so accurate and so good because he, he can perfectly assess the condition of the human heart. He can perfectly tell everyone's motives, everyone's intentions. He can reveal it all and it will be so good. And because of that, we might be quite surprised who's in and who's out because it's Jesus who's judge. It's Jesus who's judge. The second thing, that we learn is that all children are spared from judgment. All children are spared. There's many verses that, that point to this. Uh, one great one is where Jesus says, let, let the little children come to me. Let the little children come to me. God in his mercy receives all children into his presence. The third thing we've got to learn about hell is that there are degrees of experience. There are degrees of experience. This is what's missing from a lot of people's theological understanding of what the Bible teaches us about hell. So the Bible is very clear that it indicates that for those who are the most heinous, the most evil, the most worst, their punishment will be particularly severe. And I think we would agree, rightfully so. But for those who actually, they, just, they didn't believe in God, but they lived relatively moral lives, did maybe a lot of good things, their experience will be far more mild. We don't know how big that spectrum is, but it could be that their experience could be closer to neutral for some people. I'm not saying it's a good place. I'm not saying you should... I'm not trying to soften it. I'll say that it's okay if you go there. I'm saying, no, no, it's not good if you go there. But I'm saying there are degrees that are fitting for how somebody has lived. Therefore, God is still just in his prognosis. The, third, the fourth thing that we learn about, that we must learn about hell, is that there may be a spiritual death for some. Now, this is not entirely clear in the Scripture. What is clear is that there are many verses that do tell us you cannot, you cannot honestly erase this from the Bible. You can try and try and try, but you cannot erase from the Bible that for many people, it will be forever. It will be, it's just forever. You, you can try and change the Bible verses to make it say something else, but in the end, it's, it's, it's pretty, I think it's pretty dishonest to do that. I don't think you can honestly look at it and make that conclusion, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that in God's mercy for some, that there could be a spiritual death. So in Matthew chapter 10, verse uh, 28, Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, Jesus says this. He says, Do not fear those who kill, body, uh, kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Gives us some indication that that, might, that could be, potentially be the case. God in his mercy may do that. The fifth thing that we need to learn about hell is that hell exists to confine evil. Hell exists to confine evil. So that God's creation in eternity will not be tainted again by sin. That there will not be temptation again for the human race to fall into sin and to be separated from God. God is designing a maximum security facility. It's called hell. And in that place, he's going to lock away all demonic powers, all the vile and evil and toxic things, all the things that can spoil his creation, all the things that spoiled it in the first place. Because people wonder... Well, if we go to heaven, couldn't all this go wrong again and happen again like it did the last time? The Christian answer to that has to be hell. You can't, this is another reason why you cannot erase hell from the Bible, is that there must be a place forever where there is a chasm that cannot be taken away, that cannot be crossed, where everything evil and vile and toxic and tempting and destructive and horrible is permanently confined forever so that it can never, ever again spoil and distort God's creation. Our heart's desire is to be free from evil, is to be free from temptation, is to avoid all parking tickets. That's our biggest, one of, some of our biggest hopes. We, we, want to be, we, want to, we want to experience the love of God and the goodness of God and the grace of God and the connection with God and with each other forever. And hell means we can do that. 
Without hell, you cannot have confidence that, that the snake won't get back in the garden. But in that place, it'll be confined forever, separated forever. You know what feels really good? Hitting that beautiful like button. It's just sitting right there, all alone, with nothing to do. Help it live to its fullest potential. You know what else feels really good? Embracing that subscribe button. It's like a puppy begging for attention. Just showing it a little bit of love goes a long way. Like and subscribe.